welcome to my shop. On my last video, I talked about the octagonizer and how it can be used to lay out an octagon. Uh, it works well, but my ultimate goal is to make tapered legs, tapered octagonal legs for my staked furniture projects. Now to add to that, I generally lay out and design all of my projects using proportions. So I would really like to come up with a way to quickly lay out a proportionally tapered octagonal leg. Uh, I played around with this idea quite a bit and for some reason I just kept missing the idea. But finally, I sketched this square and just on a whim, rotated this another square inside of it. After doing a little exploration, it turns out that the red square will end up being five sevenths of the larger yellow square, which is makes them all proportional. Which means no matter what size leg I use, if I use the rotated square method, I will end up with a tapered leg that is tapered from seven sevenths to five sevenths. Turns out the octagonizer is really just a proportional gauge. So if I take and add simply add a pin one seventh from one of the guideline, one of the guide pins, I should be able to taper every leg proportionally by one seventh on each side, which will ultimately give me a proportional relationship from seven sevenths to five sevenths on every leg I make. And here's how it works. Okay, so here's the new gauge. I'm calling it the Octaleg Pro. Uh, it looks just like the last one, except there's a few important differences. I've proportioned this gauge so that the distance between the two guide pins will let me do stock up to 48 millimeters um, inch and seven eighths in section. I've also scaled it so that the overall length of the gauge is equal to the distance that I need for the tapered tenon on my staked furniture legs. I've also limited this gauge to just three pins. Uh, the first pin will gauge the one seventh that I need to remove to create this taper from seven sevenths to five sevenths. The middle pin will gauge the corner of the full width octagon just like before. And now I have a center pin which will gauge the center of the stock. Okay, now that I have my gauge made, I'm ready to lay out my leg. First thing I need to do is lay out the tenon area and the tenon area needs to be the same length as the gauge. So I just flush the gauge up, make a mark, and then transfer that all the way around. This will be the tenon area. Now, all of the other dimensions that I need on, I can get from this gauge. I put, place the gauge on the wood, register the guide pins, and push it down. That gives me three points. The first point is the one seventh that needs to be removed to create the taper. The second point would be the corner of the full width octagon. And the third point is the midpoint for each face. There's lots of ways you can do, you can do this. You can use a finger gauge. Um, usually though, you've got at least four legs to lay out, maybe just three, but it's easier just to set a marking gauge and be done with it. So this gauge I've set for the corner of the full width octagon and I'll mark those.
pencil those in so you might be able to see them. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to transfer this midpoint down to here. This is the bottom of the leg. I like to taper my legs from fat to skinny. So I can set my finger gauge with the midpoint. Run that all the way around. And if I don't trust it, I can flip my hand over. And that's not too bad. Now what I need to do is I need to lay out a rotated square on the end of this. This square will be five sevenths of the large square. I'm gonna to try to do this on camera. This is difficult. This square is five sevenths of the large square. Now, what I need to do is determine how much material needs to be removed to create the taper. And my first point, I've set another gauge representative of one seventh of the material that needs to be removed. And I can just scribe that line around the end of the stock. And as you might be able to see, that here's that new octagon that we need. Okay. I do not taper my legs and then remark. I mark them once and I don't have to mark them ever again. So here's how I do it. I connect the midpoint of the face, the bottom of the leg, to the corner of the full width octagon. And I do that on all four sides. That is all the layout I need to cut all these legs. So the first operation I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the shaving horse and I'm going to remove this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. Which means that this material will come off. So we'll go to the shaving horse and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, well, I lied. There is one more mark. It's nice to have on the end a target for when you hog off material before you go into the uh, uh, tapered tenon cutter. But anyway, I'm gonna try to do this leg in one shot so bear with me. All I need to do is remove all the wood down to my layout lines. So 
nice to use a, a skewed cut and also slide the draw knife. It gives you a little cleaner cut and a little easier control, especially in this dryer wood. Green's not really with me on this one. In which case, sometimes you can get away with turning around. that funky grain is. This pine works a little different than the oak that I usually use.
busting it a little bit, but so what we end up with is that five seven square. Now you could, if you are so inclined, mark out the extents of these corners back up to zero. But it's so little material that I found that it's just as easy to do it by eye. So that's what I'm going to do. One thing I would like to point out is this shaving horse is easy to adjust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these four remaining corners. I'm going to go from the base of the tenon line at zero and work my way down to this little bit of wood that needs to come off, which isn't really very much. And the grain's going to be against me. This pine. Let's see if I can clean that up. That pine's gonna dive on me right there. Grain is ugly in this piece of pine. Not my best work. Uh, grain's really fighting me on this piece. But we're getting it down to the octagon. And for up here, we want to hog off as much material as we can to get at so we, our tapered tenon cutter will go on. So that, we just dive in.
Okay, other than a little bit of rough grain right here where it peeled up on me, but most of that I'll clean off with a plane. And I usually go over these and clean them up with a plane anyway. And then this is ready to start feeding into the Veritas tapered tenon cutter. And that's pretty much what it takes for me to make a leg. I got my Veritas tapered tenon cutter and we'll see how close I am. Straight off the draw knife. It's not too bad. It should be hitting here. Yep. Now, usually I just use a knife. Even even in yoke, it, it's pretty easy to take this off with a, the little bit that you need to remove. And then it's just a matter of doing it until it fits. You'll get to where you can read this pretty well, and it won't take too much before it usually three or four times with the knife, and I get it where I need it to be. Say one more time and we've got it. Pretty close. I like that. Have that either come out flush, or maybe just a hair out. So I've got one more round with the knife. It looks like. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Real shallow cut, because it's a little easier to turn in your hands. You can adjust this blade to make it cut just about as deep as you want to, but a shallow cut gives you a, a fairly smooth tenon without wearing you completely out trying to get it on there. Now usually once I have it where I want it, which is that would be done, I'll go back through around and I will fuss out this a little bit, make it nice. But I kind of like 
a little bit of the faceted look. I think it blends well with the octagon to start with. And it gives it that, you know, that rustic handmade, I guess, kind of thing. You know, I like texture, so here we are. But generally, there's the tenon. And we'll go at it with a plane and clean up, see if I can clean up some of this ugly grain where it pulled up. So here's the finished leg. I did take a couple swipes with the plane to try to clean up the ugliness, but the grain just really wasn't with me. And this is what the tenon should look like. Okay, so there it is, the Octoleg Pro. Uh, I did, silly little name, I know, but it's actually a handy little tool and it'll allow me to quickly lay out a tapered, a proportionally tapered octagonal leg. Um, I'm sure there's, there, I know there's plenty of ways to do this, but this will make it uh, so I can quickly work on just about any project. I can come out to the shop. All I need to do is cut the correct length for the blank, use the gauge, lay it out, go to the shaving horse, cut them, and I'm ready to go. So, like always, I hope you found this helpful, or at least entertaining. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.